Hey everyone, Sylee here. This is going to be a quick Unity installation tutorial for Carbon Copy, brought to you by Dreadworth and I. Now, if you haven't seen it already, be sure to check out the product trailer for Carbon Copy. And if you need a look at all the features and things that Carbon Copy can do, we have an in-game demo as well that you can check out. If you have questions beyond this video, we have full documentation over on GitHub that you can check out and read at your own leisure, and a Discord server for all your support questions that you can go ahead and ask and get help as needed. All right. So let's jump right in. Up here at the top, we have a drop down for Dread Tools and Carbon Copy, which you can go ahead and click on to pop up the Carbon Copy installation window. All right. By default, it's going to go ahead and populate the first avatar descriptor for you if you have one. And at this point, you can just click Carbon Copy or apply Carbon Copy to just apply it immediately with default settings and you'll be on your way. But I'm going to go ahead and go through every single little individual setting for you so that you know how to customize it to your needs. All right. So avatar, this is going to be the avatar you install Carbon Copy to. Clone name is going to be the name of the clone in the hierarchy in case you want to differentiate them if you have more than one, right? Clone type, we have two different suites here for you. You can either have the full suite, which is mimic and mirror features, or if you don't really need mirror, you can go ahead and choose mimic only and that'll be a little bit more optimized, all right? The HUD settings over here is where you want the HUD to be positioned on your screen. This works in VR as well. So if you want it to be in the top right, top left, bottom left, etc. By default, it's going to be the bottom right. And this is going to be the color of the HUD. So you choose. Um, if you don't want it to be white, you can pick a different color. By default, the scaling module is also included. You can disable it by clicking this little X here. If you do not want to have scaling, it will save you some memory. But in the scaling, we have a few options here. Stabilize scale. We'll use a one additional bool, but basically, while the clone is confirmed, if you try to rescale, it's not going to make the, the clone just fly away from you. It'll keep it in place. So this is just a recommendation to keep it in place for you and keep you sane, I guess, um, unless you're confused. Save scale. This will be for you to allow the clone's size to persist between avatar loads and world loads. The minimum percent and the maximum percent is you choosing how small and how big the clone can go from your radial puppet. So if you want a finer control of the radial puppet, you can make the range smaller. Or if you just want to have a giant range, that's up to you. Over here under preferences, we can go ahead and choose whether or not we want certain things to save or persist or be default on or off. So the proportionate movement setting is a setting that you have in game that lets you choose whether or not the clone moves proportionally with you or not on the either the XC plane or the Y axis. But basically you can choose whether or not they start on or off from here or whether they should save. Whether or not the HUD is on by default or off by default and if that saves, that can be done here as well. When freeze, the freeze behavior, you can choose either to have it disable dynamic bones whenever you freeze or have it enabled, but it'll jiggle a little whenever you do a freeze clone. So whether or not you want this behavior setting on or off by default and saved as well. And then lastly, when you do a vertical mirror, if you have the mirror suite enabled, you can choose whether or not the dynamic bones will invert as well when you do a vertical mirror, or if they will follow the gravity and force of real world physics instead. So you can choose to configure that as well. And that's preferences. Proxy over here lets you use another clone or another avatar, I should say, as your clone. So whenever I drop the clone, it doesn't necessarily have to be a copy of myself, but it could be an entirely different avatar instead, as long as it is also a humanoid avatar. That way the bones still line up to an extent. Multi-clone lets you apply more than one clone to your avatar. So in order to use this, you have to provide a suffix for the clone. So typically I just use a letter or something like this. But essentially, after installing your first clone, you can enable multi-clone and apply a suffix. That way, as you install more and more clones, they each have their own separate set of animations and controls in the menu and separate set of parameters and all that. And that way you can control as many clones as your performance can handle, I guess. Don't overdo it. I don't recommend it. <laughs> config this will open up the configuration settings here where you can go ahead and choose here for a frame rate how many frames the lag clone or clone when it lags should simulate so by default this is five um, and under dynamic bone handling whenever there are dynamic bones that exist on the armature of the humanoid rig itself you can sort of choose how that is handled, whether or not it should regenerate it to a non-humanoid 
child versus if it should just ignore dynamic bones entirely and don't make constraints or if it should just apply anyway. If you don't know what this means or what it does, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, extra bind type. This is specifically for the eighth bind mode in the bind menu for the quick menu. You can choose whether or not will generate a spring joint ball sort of system for you, or you can choose whether it should be a custom target for you to bind to. So if you target, you can choose a bone or object in your hierarchy for the clone to bind to when you activate this. Clone FX animations will clone all of the existing animations on your FX playable layer for you. So if you have any toggles, any spring joint balls, anything like that, it'll clone them as well so that when you activate them, your clone will also reflect those same animations. Clone Lip Sync will go ahead and have your clone also have its visims moving and talking in accordance with your own. No Gesture Expressions means whenever you're using any of the gesture controls for the clone, it'll prevent your facial expressions from going off by accident. That way you don't randomly make faces or stick your tongue out whenever you're trying to use the ball bind or whenever you're doing other gesture controls. Optimize Mimic is an option that's only available when we switch this over to Mimic only. But Optimize Mimic will replace the dynamic bones on the clone with rotation constraints as well. And that way it'll be a little bit more optimized. Right defaults on will automatically be de determined and detected for you. Otherwise, if it is mixed, it'll provide you with a little error. But otherwise, if you do not want it to be on or off or whatever it detects, you can click on it to set it to the opposite. And this will just control the right defaults that the clone generates with. All right. Lastly, cleanup. This will choose whether or not you should remove certain components from the clone copy itself. So for example, if your clone has any cameras, you can enable this to remove any cameras from the clone and only have it on your local copy or real avatar. If your clone has any audio, you can go ahead and have that removed as well so it doesn't duplicate any audio. If you don't want it to duplicate any physics colliders like box colliders, capsule colliders, sphere colliders, right? Like real unity colliders. And then you can also prevent it from cloning dynamic bones as well as dynamic bone colliders with this option right here. All right. So it just gives you a further control on whether or not certain commands should duplicate over to your clone. That pretty much covers all the modules over here. Lastly, we have a simple log button that you can enable so that during the apply carbon copy generation, if you have any issues, it can provide you with some basic step logs in the console to provide us in case you have any issues and it'll help us to help debug and troubleshoot, right? And then lastly, after installation, you can click on this little button to remove it from your avatar in case you need to redo it, all right? Over here at the bottom, you can choose whether or not you can use the default path to generate these assets or if you want to move that to a different location. And then lastly, this is a little auto updater checker for you in case you want to check for if there are any new updates to apply carbon copy. Um, so I'm just going to click this button and you can see it generate in real time and how long that takes. And then after you go ahead and install carbon copy, right, it'll go ahead and show you the clone on the screen very briefly, possibly. Um, I don't think you'll see it very well under Mimic, but for example, if you save on my body, you're still going to see the clone. So that's just for checking purposes. There's a hide clone button here to hide it afterwards. So go ahead and click this to finalize the whole system. And you are good to go at this point. I can show you that that is all now here. If I really need. So with that, if you do want to uninstall it, I'll just demonstrate that as well. If I click remove carbon copy from avatar, everything will disappear and you are good to go again. So with that, again, if you have any questions, feel free to read the GitHub documentation, reach out to us on Discord. But with that, Happy cloning.